I wanted to address a more specific issue today on this video concerning Victoria Eschatology and Rapturalists, which are the two most influential books concerning partial preterism. And partial preterism is, again, is the belief that there is uh, no falling away or apostasy in the end times. There's no antichrist, uh, no tribulation period. And this eschatology feeds into the concept of a positive or optimistic or a victorious church and feeds into the NAR beliefs, dominionism, kingdom now of a takeover of the nations, uh, dominion, etc. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the Antichrist. Um, both of these books claim that there is no Antichrist and that the Antichrist or what they consider the Antichrist was in the first century. And they make claims. I'm going to read you those claims real quick and then I want to read you some of church history. And I'll let you be the judge. So real quick, out of Victoria's Eschatology, Harold Everly and Martin Trench say this, in recent years, hundreds of books, movies, and videos have developed the image of a soon-coming world leader called the Antichrist. Active imaginations have been at work building one idea upon another until a fully developed myth has taken hold of the minds of millions of modern-day Christians. Okay, now out of Rapture List, here's just a couple quotes. In summary, the teaching that Jesus' words in Matthew 24, the prophecies of Daniel, and the book of Revelation are all referring to future events is a new concept which came as a reaction to the Reformation. <clears throat> it has become deeply embedded in the American evangelical community but it does not have the support of church history or scripture. The belief in a future rapture, antichrist, and great tribulation are new ideas that arose from a reaction against the Reformation in the 1500s. The early church had heard that antichrist as false teaching was coming but they had not heard that the Antichrist as a one world ruler was coming. Okay, that was all from Rapturalists. Now, quickly I'm going to read some quotes from Church Fathers. <clears throat> you can judge whether Antichrist beliefs, etc. came out of the Reformation or not. The oldest Greek commentary on the book of Revelation was written by Andrew of Caesarea sometime in the 6th century, uh, maybe 7th century, 560 to 630, somewhere in there. Oldest Greek commentary on Apocalypse. And he says this, If some have interpreted these things as having happened to the Judeans under the Romans of old, considering the four divine angels showing that to escape the wrath of those being put to trial, either on the earth and on the sea, is impossible. Much more, this looks forward to the things that will occur in the time of the Antichrist, not only in the Judean part of the earth, but in all of the earth at which the angels stand holding the four corners, having undertaken to perform a service given to them by God, but which is unknown to us. Uh, the, the other oldest commentary we have on the book of Revelation, not Greek, but I believe Latin, was written by Victorinus uh, approximately in 270 A.D., so 200 years after the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, I'm just skimming through because there's so much, uh, but I'll read one paragraph. Uh, he, and he shall make fire come down from heaven in the sight of men. Yes, as I also have said, in the sight of men. Magicians do these things by the aid of the apostate angels, even to this day. He shall cause also that a golden image of Antichrist shall be placed in the temple at Jerusalem, and that the apostate angels should enter and thence utter voices and oracles. Moreover, he himself shall contrive that his servants and children should receive as a mark on their forehands, foreheads <laughs> or on their right hands the number of his name, lest anyone should buy or sell. Uh, John Chrysostom, he said this, And he calls him the man of sin, for he shall do numberless mischiefs and shall cause others to do them. But he calls him the son of perdition, because he is also to be destroyed. But who is he? Is it then Satan? By no means, but some man that admits his fully working in him, for he is a man, and exalteth himself against all that is called God or his worship. For he will not introduce idolatry, but will be a kind of opponent to God. He will abolish all the gods, and will order men to worship him instead of God. And he will be seated in the temple of God, not that in Jerusalem only, but also in every church. 
skipping more. And then the last two I'll do real quick is uh, Hippolytus. He said this, he actually wrote a whole treatise called On Christ and Antichrist. And he said this, It is proper that we take the Holy Scriptures themselves in hand and find out from them what and of what manner the coming of Antichrist is, on what occasion and at what time that impious one shall be revealed, and whence and from what tribe he shall come, and what his name is, which is indicated by the number in the Scripture, and how he shall work error among the people, gathering them from the ends of the earth, and how he shall stir up tribulation and persecution against the saints, and how he shall glorify himself as God, and what his end shall be, and how the sudden appearing of the Lord shall be revealed from heaven, and what the conflagration of the whole world shall be, and what the glorious and heavenly kingdom of the saints is to be, when they reign together with Christ, and what the punishment of the wicked by fire. Last one is from the Didache. The Didache was written any time between 50 A.D. to 120 A.D. In other words, 20 years to roughly 90 years after Jesus died and rose again. And it was like a catechism. It was a, a manual, the first really manual of how to do things in order in the church. But at the end of the Didache, they wrote this. Watch for your life's sake. Let not your lamps be quenched. For in the last days, false prophets and corruptors shall be multiplied, and the sheep shall be turned into wolves, and love shall be turned into hate. For when lawlessness increases, they shall hate and persecute and betray one another, and then shall appear the world deceiver as son of God, and shall do signs and wonders, and the earth shall be delivered into his hands, and he shall do iniquitous things which have never yet come to pass since the beginning. Then shall the creation of man come into the fire of trial, and many shall be made to stumble, and shall perish. But those who endure in their faith shall be saved from under the curse itself. And then shall appear the signs of the truth, first the sign of the outspreading in heaven, then the sign of the sound of the trumpet, and third, the resurrection of the dead, yet not of all, but as, as it is said, the Lord shall come, and all his saints with him. Then shall the world see the Lord coming upon the clouds of heaven. So, my point is, and I didn't read everything because I wanted to keep the video short. If you do research, and it's not hard to do, but it takes a lot of time, you can find the church fathers that spoke about the Antichrist, that spoke about a tribulation period, uh, that spoke quite a bit about an apostasy and a falling away that is coming. Uh, all claims in these two books that are false. These books feed fantasy. The fantasy of uh, modern Christianity, that uh, charismatic Christianity that seems to be running a little bit wild. And these fuel it because they speak as though they're le legitimate. And they're full of fallacious arguments. One of the worst fallacious arguments is what's called sweeping generalizations. A lot of those are in here. So we need to analyze this stuff. Speak out about it. The early church believed in an Antichrist figure. Preterisms want you to believe, preterists want you to believe that everything happened back then. There's no Antichrist, there's no falling away, etc. But no church father talks about 70 AD as being so important. In fact, Jonathan Welton, whoops, wrong guy. Jonathan Welton compares it to the virgin birth, to the resurrection, and he says it's that important to understand what happened in 70 A.D. But no church father refers to 70 A.D. as uh, completing an antichrist, a falling away, all these different things that are found in Scripture. But they pretty much in general all talk about stuff in the future. So what these books do and these movements do is they dismantle, they deconstruct and reconstruct. And we have to start analyzing them and calling them out because when you take the bible the bible not matthew 24 but the bible in context and you read ezekiel you read daniel you read zechariah you read revelation you read thessalonians you read matthew 24 you read all these things together and then you take church fathers polycarp sat under the apostle john he trained Arrhenius, and then Hippolytus was under that influence. Arrhenius has pages on the Antichrist. Arrhenius even said the temple would be rebuilt one day. Hippolytus wrote the treatise on Christ and Antichrist. Commodian, Victorinus, 
John Chrysostom, even Jerome talks about the Antichrist is in the future. It goes on and on and on like that. Pay attention. Don't swallow this stuff. It's poisoning the faith. Thanks.